I was part of a very frustrating conversation recently. A conversation that made me wish that I had instead rolled around in broken glass. Naive me assumed that I was in a conversation between two reasonable people. This was not that type of conversation or that type of person. The subject we were discussing was why it's difficult today for a man to find a good woman. Now, I usually find these conversations interesting with a reasonable person, but this discussion was a pedantic debate with an academic midwit, determined to defend himself with knowledge only and win with knowledge only. Cherry pick knowledge, mind you. This guy was a rhetorically astute sophist with a platinum library card. The kind of person that when you say, well, the sky is blue, that's true, wouldn't you agree? They would say, well, it's not always blue, and what is true anyway? It's the kind of person that name drops a Schopenhauer quote in order to blue screen the conversation. He would regularly cite extremes to make a point instead of giving reasonable examples. It's like he was trying to win a Pulitzer Prize. The conversation was littered with ridiculous rebuttals like, Well, if Brad Pitt gets divorced, what hope does any normal guy out there have? The person I was talking to, let's call him Adolf for the purposes of this video, is the type of academic sophist I've suffered through many times. I wasted almost an hour of my life on this particular person. Adolf would effortlessly deflect any reasonable point of view that I tried to add to the discussion. Any attempt to make the conversation pedestrian was one-upped with a dramatic extreme by him because, I don't know, in his mind, because his point was larger and ridiculous, it was somehow better. Quality does not seem to matter to these types of people, only size. Adolf was always crouched down and eager to burst out of the blocks like a sprinter and tell me how I was wrong, how everything is against him and men, no matter what we do or what we say. And okay, I can sympathize to a degree. So I began by acknowledging Adolf's opening point about why it's difficult dating out there, because he did make a reasonable point. A lot is against men today, much more than in our grandfather's generation. It is difficult. The expectations in games today are ridiculous. And I also understand why any self-respecting person would give up trying to find a decent human being to love amongst the entitled lunatics in the dating pool today. I really do honestly understand the legitimate gripes for those who are trying and failing with the best of intentions. There is a lot working against all of us. But... Whenever I try to later bring the discussion back to practicalities and solutions for the individual man, you know, back to reasonable ways in which a man could think, act, and decide to date and love, I was constantly met with No, you're wrong. Because of what could go wrong. Even if the man did everything with the utmost stoic, mature intent, there always seemed to be a scared hyper nervousness to every practical solution that I tried to offer to Adolf. He always seemed to have his hand on the sword, ready to oppose. I say left, he says right. He reminded me of my ex-girlfriend. And if the saying all is fair in love and war is taken on face value, then people like Adolf will say and do anything to win these battles. The adults of the world seem to love the competition in a discussion and not the reasonable truth. They enjoy strangling a win out of every chat they engage in. It's all political to them. It's all victory. And in truth, I just give up most times and say, you're right, Adolf. So they stop talking. I hand them their coveted little chocolate trophy that they can hold up above their heads on their imaginary podiums and feel better. I mean, what am I getting out of this, right? Who is the writer that said something akin to, if you argue with an idiot, there ends up being two idiots? Anyway, these kinds of largely pointless, circular and self-righteous debates with the adults out there about what a woman should do or how things should be, got me thinking. I'm sitting there listening to this dude, to the relationship manifesto according to Adolf, and I think to myself, why the f 
What are you telling me with so much righteousness? I mean, good for you, but why not use this confidence and enthusiasm and stand up for yourself with the next chick, like you're doing now here with me? Do this on a date. But you won't, will you, Adolf? No, Adolf turns into a three-year-old on a date, doesn't he? Adolf doesn't assert his values like this. He does it with me and the guys, sure. But Adolf doesn't say sh on a date in front of Karen, does he? You see, I think these types of guys and girls make these exaggerated standards about being brave and stunning and powerful and all of that. Attitudes that no self-respecting person would date in real life. As a way of saying, another person will never break my heart again. And I'll make sure they never break my heart again. Because my standards are not just here anymore, sweetheart. They're up here, so good luck hurting me anymore. Checkmate, I win. I think the stubbornness of the adults I've encountered is just a survival response. That's what I think. These ridiculous, often ludicrous beliefs that men and women state online today, as cringy as they are, are just people afraid of being hurt. And so they exaggerate their boundaries to a cartoonish level, like when women say a man should make a million dollars, be funny, have a great body, be over six foot tall, yada, yada, yada. Or when a man says she needs to be a 10 in bed, have a 10 body, be a chef, blah, blah, blah. It is all simply saying, I don't want to be hurt, I don't want to fail. And in a way, these ridiculous standards guarantee that to them. No one will hurt them with their delusional attitude. Adolf will probably never have a healthy relationship that lasts, but hey, mission accomplished, man. No one will hurt you like your ex did. And so what did I realize after my frustrating discussion with him? It hit me. I was struck with the degree to which the adults of the world never said to their ex-girlfriends even half of the things that they were now saying to me. And I really wish they would have. I wish they'd shown some of this backbone and passion. I wish they'd stood up for themselves more like this. So here's some advice to Adolf if he ever goes on a date again. Pretend it's me sitting across from you. You'll be much prouder of yourself later. And I won't have to listen to your bullshit.